Hello and welcome to our last GDTA Spotlight session in the year 2021. And I would like to ask all of you who are not around, yes, to switch off the microphones. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, welcome to the Spotlight session. My name is Uli Weinberg. I'm the director of the School of Design Thinking in Potsdam in Germany and also the president of the Global Design Thinking Alliance, the GDTA which is actually the host today of our spotlight. And uh, thanks to Steffi, who is just playing the trailer and prepared the session, we can run this uh, also as an online session. And it's usually meant that we have uh, a speaker uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes talking about design thinking issues. And it's usually one of the GDTA members. And it's this is the case for today as well with Professor André Breskis from Cologne. And uh, it is an open session for all of you. So you can, I would like to invite you to switch off the video while André Breskis is talking. Uh, but then after that, I would like to all, all of you to switch on the video and to get in a lively discussion with Andre, because what we are always trying to do is an open discussion session here and not just one lecture and then we that we are at the evening. Um, so I'm very happy that uh, we have Andre here as a guest, but before Andre starts, I'm very happy that we have uh, Beatrix Busse, the vice president of the University of Cologne, here as a guest. And uh, I'm really happy that University of Cologne, uh, not just the department of André Breskis, but actually the whole university is highly interested in joining the GDTA. And I would like to hand over now to give the stage to Beatrix Busse, uh, vice president of University of Cologne, one of the largest universities we have in Europe. So please. Yes, hello. Beatrix Thank Busse. you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. And um, yes, a warm welcome to you and also uh, a good afternoon, at least that's the time zone where we are in right now. So but I know that it's very international. So we are very honored. It's a great pleasure and honor to speak to you um, today, just very briefly before André Breskis, my dear colleague from the physics department, you know, presents um, his work on um, design thinking, how he uses it. Um, I just wanted to really stress how honored we are and also happy that we can join this alliance here, this group of design of adamant design thinkers um, who and also practitioners of design thinking. Um, this is fantastic. And just before when we discussed this, you know, we, we said how um, well, sometimes difficult it is to introduce this kind of approach because of, well, it's methods, it's user centeredness, but that's something I will be just briefly talking about in a minute. Yes, I'm a member of the University of Cologne in charge of teaching and learning at the University of Cologne, uh, which means uh, in a way in charge of almost 50,000 students. So at least one of the largest universities in, in Germany. And as you can imagine, we um, had kind of a few challenges during this pandemic, but we coped and we also coped with introducing new methods among others also, um, well, design thinking. Um, now, for, for I think that Cologne University is also known for its scientific achievements, not just in the natural sciences, for example, plant sciences, but also quantum uh, physics, for example. And one of the key profile areas is also teacher education. So about 14,000 of our students would like to become teachers. And therefore, it's also our, um, we think, our mission really to introduce them to new methods, new tools, to cooperation, to show them how to work together in different ways. And we've been practicing this. Uh, André Breskis will present this to you how well he is really, I mean, I would say one of the well run, forerunners of, of what can be done uh, also with a kind of didactic 
um, approach to this. So yeah, that's something we have done for the strategic processes. You know, since I have arrived in uh, 2015, uh, 2019, sorry, we have used design thinking methods to come up with a strategy teaching and learning for the university of Cologne. And uh, in that process, more than 300 people participated and we used a number of design thinking methods to really talk about what it is that the user, be it the student, but also the educator really needs. And from that, we developed our teaching mission. We're in the process of developing micro credentials and, and um, our approach to digital education. One component of this, for example, is new, uh, new work methods, including how to really train the next generation in design thinking methods. So I just wanted to uh, mention this, that design thinking has also reached the leadership level. And I say this with a kind of tone of irony as well, because I know how difficult this is and how well, I mean, difficulties in an expert organization like a university uh, with hierarchies, with, with a high level of individuality, how to, to then really push um, cooperation, co-creation, co-creation efforts, interdisciplinarity of this kind. Of course, we work in an interdisciplinary way to solve the big problems. But if you work on a mission and then say, well, now focus on the user, that's a different issue. And we've probably all made this experience in various contexts. So it's great that we can join uh, this, 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 this group of, of um, yeah, Adam and design thinkers. Thank you very much really for accepting us. As I said, it's a real honor. And finally, my big thank you to Andre Breskes for pushing this, for, for really, um, yeah, making this happening, because I, as I can see, there's so many interesting people here from all over the world. And I've just seen where all the colleagues are situated who are part of this, this group. So thank you very much. And also a special thanks to you, Professor Weinberg, for really hosting us today. And now I hand over to Andre Breskes, Professor of Physics, Di Physics Didactics in Teacher Education. Uh, in all sorts of ways, really, the floor. I hand over to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it wouldn't be possible without your continuous support, Mrs. Busse, because buy-in from leadership is crucial, as we all know from our daily practice. Another thing we know from our daily practice is uh, that people, processes, and places are important in design thinking. Now look, uh, what do you think about this place? Uh, <clears throat> guess where that is? Uh, Mike Schresser, uh, left hand from Future St um, Strategy for Teacher Education, shows us a bit around. Actually, it's a ship. Uh, in the backdrop, you see the city of Cologne with its magnificent um, double tip cathedral and this large um, river Rhine. It is um, a research ship, actually, and a quite large one, 200 foot. And uh, this marvelous place um, felt right between in her lap because this um, research vessel was about to be scraped because it was expensive to be overhauled. It needed a new painting and, and this. So the question was, couldn't it be useful for teacher education? Could somebody convert it in a science lab to do some sciencey things on it with um, students and pupils from school? Quite practical because the students could just drop off from the tram station you see right here and would be on the ship and could do some um, sciencey things. And that was the starting point of this design journey. Fresh out of uh, a, a D school workshop, I said, let's take it. And um, now what would you do uh, when you start uh, with it and you are research um, people? Well, um, you start with some background research <clears throat> and that's where we started in the seminar. So um, IPN interest studies, uh, for example, says that uh, about 20% uh, uh, of the humanity are interested in physics and technology and hard stuff at all. And most of them are males. And 
more um, about half of the populations are interested in science when it is connected to humanity, to heal, to well-being, to nature. And 20% uh, uh, a quarter of the population would be uh, connected to science if that has a belonging in society, like climate change that is impacting society and you need to uh, basic knowledge in science to understand what's going on or pandemic, for example. So that is the basic research. And um, now, honestly, we, we bought a book uh, about design thinking and off we went, uh, no kidding, it was a story um, in uh, 2014. Um, we um, made a seminar around it at university uh, with the question, how might we engage all these groups of interest if we have them on a ship? And you see how rusty this vessel was in uh, 90, uh, 2014. So uh, we did everything that was in the book. We empathized with uh, the students. We um, watched them at uh, classes, even at home. They, some of the students watched their um, uh, little um, sisters, for example. We made mood boards and we gathered their point of view. And everybody was absolutely impressed from these wheels of ideas, what came out of this particular seminar at the university. So this is just uh, a sample of the ideas. We could uh, teach to the students why there is a river at all. We could throw um, sticks from the ship and see how much they move in the stream and do a lot of physics around this. We could study how um, fishes adapt to the fast flowing water. We could in a simulator uh, try to figure out what is the optimal shape of a fish? And we could even make a virtual reality simulation uh, to dive down under the ship and look what the um, river looks from there. That just were all ideas that came out of one seminar. And we did uh, what the book tells us. We tested our ideas. And here you see how we managed with these groups of interest. So we offered um, the group of uh, pupils from a nearby uh, school uh, red, uh, yellow, or green uh, sticky points. And you take a green one if you are absolutely interested in science. And you took uh, a red one if you are hate science. And if you think, yes, well, it's there, you took the yellow ones. And um, that's how the desk looked afterwards. Of course, we have polite um, students in Cologne. So everybody took the yellow ones. Yes, science important. <laughs> nobody took the green ones. And polite as they are, nobody took the red ones. So, okay. And then uh, things went on. So they are under this crowd of uh, pupils. Somewhere down below is my notebook with a simulation about fluid dynamics on it. And you see how the students are gathering around this. And um, <clears throat> There are more ideas about shapes of uh, penguins, for example, dolphins, how are they adopted? And we collected the sticky points. And some of the students went like, oh, the numbers don't match. Look what has happened. Uh, a huge bunch of pupils brought back the jello buttons and took green buttons instead, saying, if that's science, I'm interested in it. So they put these mediocre jello buttons away and they took the jello ones and put it on everything uh, that was interesting for them, shapes of fishes and simulators um, neatly pointed there. They get a new viewpoint of science and uh, that made us very happy. And um, we built a lot of these things into the ship. That's how it looks right now with three channels, simulations, a lot of digital media. So this is a science lab at work right now. And impressive was what, did this, what, what this did with the teacher education students. Um, never had such effective teaching about target specific ed education design. That's what they said about design thinking. Um, they, are, they are more interested in the topic of fluid dynamics. Uh, they were hungry after the seminar. The design thinking seminar would close a gap between university theory and educational practice. Good work. And what I like to see, it's good to work with the teacher, not for the teacher. I really like this. So um, in the quantitative area, 
um, it was even more interesting. So these were teacher education students. So we took uh, a test that is aimed for the self uh, estimation of teacher students. And we are delighted to see that uh, they really felt after the seminar and the post testing that they were really able to generate new ideas fast. No surprise, that's what design thinking is really good at. And they felt themselves more talented to make a change in the practice, in schools, in community. And that's very <laughs> important. As I felt good at supporting their presentations with media, they felt talented to mediate conflicts. And uh, you know, you have a lot of conflicts to deal with in a design thinking group. That's part of the game. And they were more empathic. They had the feeling that they could estimate their kids would struggle. All of these are really important values for teacher education. So you could argue if uh, design thing is made for teacher education in some way. We um, figured that we would test it, where we would even put it in use as a research tool. So um, beginning from this, we were um, not only satisfied with just interviewing kids and figure out what they are thinking, forming into a small design groups. We are trying to generate solutions for the kids uh, figure out how they react and take this as part of our research approach that's called design-based research. You learn a lot of your, uh, on your tar target group by uh, producing uh, prototypes for them. And um, that's what uh, science education research is all about, you know, learning about your target group. So we carried on with this and uh, we did a little more professional um, we uh, take courses at the DE school. We partnered with Uli Weinberg and Claudia Nikolai. Claudia Nikolai showed me a wave uh, of information about um, design thinking. Uh, we had uh, a joint project with D school in 2017. Um, uh, a group of students from Potsdam came to Cologne to redesign our competence lab experiments. That uh, was the task. And these students asked the most important question ever a question we have totally forgotten and the question was why why should these kids come to the science lab uh, throw sticks from the ship and uh, play around with simulations why how does this influence their life their community their living in a more and more complex future why? They asked why, and that's what uh, um, the e-school student is <laughs> really trained to do. Uh, and we realized that we have not enough answers about this. Why should they um, study science? And uh, in this time, uh, Fridays for Future uh, went off, and a lot of kids on Friday went out of school and uh, gathered at the Cologne Cathedral uh, um, to um, striking uh, against school and uh, we had discussions with Friday for Future and they said the, ki the kids in school, they would learn a lot of information, but they wouldn't learn how to change the society for the better. All that stuck. An output, a prototype from this D-School project of 2017 was pack up your science lab, pack it up, make a science lab to go and bring the science equipment, bring the lab to where the problems are, where the community is, where the kids are. So we boxed it up uh, to what is now a maker space, a digital uh, maker space for the future strategy and uh, provided this uh, lab structure to students in the um, nearby schools um, and helped them to solve problems of their community. And that is where the point get really interesting and uh, where I see uh, this combination to what, for example, um, startup um, um, services do, what uh, really the core of design thinking is, taking all this knowledge uh, of a university, all the science, language, arts, and put it at work where the people are. After all, a quarter of the students of University of Cologne, 14,000 students, are in teacher education and will become teachers in schools all around the university, in the smallest communities, um, uh, being part of the, the city community, of the network of parents, of kids, um, of all that parenthood is about. 
And the same people are deeply embedded as long as they are at university in science, law, business, in what all the other students at University of Cologne are, are studying there. But they are up to the task to bring this into schools and show where the relevance is. Um, that these are is a big uh, issue, and we figured out that perhaps design thinking could be um, a key methodology for this. We are not alone, uh, thank God, uh, at University of Cologne. We have uh, other professionals that work with um, design thinking at the Gateway Accelerator Service, um, for example. And this is co a community that uh, really has um, start up coaches, people that do basically the same thing, uh, scrummaging around the university, try to find out where there's new science, interesting things, interesting ideas, and show um, uh, students how to put it to work, be it in a startup or be it in an NGO, be it in some sort of community service. That's what Gateway is doing. And we figured we could partner and develop this further. And basically, uh, convert all the schools around the university into startup centers. And um, we are taking a big chance with the newest school in Cologne, the Helios Schule, which is a matter of fact, a school as part of the university, the inclusive university school uh, with 1,400 students of every age group, uh, which will be um, um, teached by our students and by um, you know, professional teachers um, around there. And if you look about the interior design of the D school, you will see it somehow, I said D school, that was a mistake, it's a university school, but it somehow looks like it could be at the HPI perhaps. You have all these team spaces here, you have even breakout rooms where they can gather for conferences. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, in the center part, you have this large auditorium. And that is for every 100 uh, students. So every 100 uh, student, um, student pupils of the school have all these team spaces and one auditorium. And then there's the next um, uh, team space. And they're even uh, connected with all these balconies around here. So they have bolder opportunities. So you can free climb from one of these spaces to the other one. Uh, up there, up the wall. So that uh, is really interesting concept and it really cries for having project work there and implementing design thinking there with this large auditorium to pitch your ideas and all these labs and working co-working spaces to uh, develop your ideas. So that's what's going on right now there. Now I need your assistance, I need your help. Please, everybody, you've got to chat down here, you, you see um, the chat button in Zoom and you know how it's managed. Uh, first, I want you to think about your past and to remember a situation where your favorite teacher really inspired you, has really sparked something in you, be it by an engaging talk or just by all his knowledge he, ha he has brought to you, or be it because he's an inspiring team leader or just a really nice person you are empathic with and you wanted to work with. Think about such a situation from your favorite teacher. And now think the same from your favorite entrepreneur. Think about your favorite entrepreneur. You, I took similar pictures from business context, but uh, spoiler alert, it's not the clothing. Um, what do these have in common? A really inspiring teacher or a really inspiring entrepreneur which is able to lead a team and uh, pursue a good goal? Curiosity, connecting with the audience. Yes, right. Everybody, a teacher has to be curious to figure out new things for its pupils. And an entrepreneur has to be curious to test out new things for the market, for his group. More ideas about this. Empathy, first and for all. Oh, your teacher really has created something for Galina. Great. That had a huge impact for you. If you remember it now, it had an impact on you. 
clear knowledge, factual knowledge is ever so important for us in university and a vision and the vision sometimes uh, we lack. Never let adversity stop from reaching a goal. <laughs> That's always absolutely true for a good teacher. And it's so important for an entrepreneur. I'm so impressed from you. Thank you. That is great. Encouraging to find an open patch. Engaging, that comes really out. Teaching, a good teacher makes us do something on our own. A good teacher works to make himself sort of needless. So if he does a job right, you are on your own. And that's a good leadership too. Thank you so much for these contribu contributions. I will save this chat because that was not a rhetoric thing. I really, really, really need the input from your community to make the teacher education in Cologne better, which is my clear vision, as you may well see. Now, um, to um, open it um, up, what are our next ideas? So we have this beautiful uh, university school, which is sort of a design thinking center, sort of a startup center. And that's where the ideas from the students should start. And we have, so we have a place, we have a place, we have people and we are training the people at university. Now we need a process, right? Uh, so that's the process we are working with for now. Uh, you see figuratively a, a closeness to design thinking processes. Uh, we will see closer in a minute. Most important point, and that's where the good teacher starts in engaging. So our process starts with an engaging phase where the good teacher inspires the students uh, to go their own path. It's followed by an exploration pass. Um, I apologize for the German all around, but I wanted to prove that it's actually a school document. So here are the German curricular standards that the students have to comply in the seventh grade. And it all fits nicely to a um, design thinking um, sort of process here. Exploration, doing your own research, making field research, gathering insight, connect to people, explain, very important, you, we have it in design uh, thinking too, the exchange phases, and it's even more important for students to, um, <clears throat> to explain your own feelings, to, um, to um, contextualize your own feelings, to explain things to other students. Elaborate, that's basically the uh, phase where you find your own ideas and uh, prototype it, and evaluate is the testing phase, and exchange, that was uh, added by a uh, wish of the teachers that really wanted um, the students to go out into the community afterwards. So exploring what makes um, Cologne, what will happen with the city of Cologne when the climate gets warmer. So everything is bundled to the um, global sustainability goals, the sustainability goals you see on top of it. If we have climate change, how can we make our city more resilient? Um, how should a, a city be built? Uh, to make it uh, more user-friendly, more um, climate-friendly uh, for the people. What do our uh, residents of the city are thinking about it when you interview about this? That's uh, what happens there. And that's the last point, bring it out into the public. So the students are really bringing their prototypes like cookies out into the community and uh, speak to um, people around there. So um, that is my last impression. I have showed you a lot of pictures, but um, I don't like pictures. I would like to show you uh, to a short two minute video and then we can open the discussion. I will comment about this video as it runs. Um, and here it goes. So you see here the engage pass and you see the teacher really did it and you see the zoom uh, applause so these kids are really grown with uh, distant teaching what they're doing now is they're starting to do their own research with uh, the lab equipment we provided um, for the school the lab on the go how has a city be shaped to have a fresh breeze going through it. Um, can we do buildings upon buildings or need we alleys? This is researching how um, bricks are heating up uh, if the sun shines on them. 
these are water pumps. Perhaps uh, they have the idea to cool the bricks from the inside. I don't know. They are providing, first thing, their own ideas. Oh, that's the plan that you see there. That's about the effects of carbon dioxide, what they research, uh, the temperature sensors kinematic gas theory so you see there's no problem to put the science in there but the science is there because the students need it that's why this is the presentation phase so the students present their research outcomes their findings and um, they hustle to present um, to the group how the city of Cologne has to be reshaped to build a better future what kind of sensors could be put in different parts of the city to warn for um, hazards? Uh, how has the city be replaced, rebuilt, reshaped uh, with more green, with more water, with more plants? And they are uh, going to present it in the way that they could convince uh, the local mayor, parents, uh, the architects, or what? That's what's going on. They are using signs make their ground to get better ideas and to make things for their future uh, with the ultimate mind to convince parents, religions, uh, the community uh, how science should be put to use for a better future. That's my impression about the connection of design thinking, science research and teacher education in a modern university to shape the community for a better future. And I thank you so very much for inviting me here. Thank you very much, André. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your ideas and your vision about <clears throat> how the teacher education in the future should really look like and uh, actually showing showing us that is that you are doing this already it's not just the future no, it sir. is uh, amazing what you're doing with uh, with your school and that you have that school available in Potsdam University we're just building this kind of school as an experimental lab and I hope that the D school gets access we don't have it right now but uh, since it's still in the making it's it's good so I'm I'm happy that we have uh, several people even joining later. And uh, I'm also impressed with your background, which I thought you were sitting in front of the window, but you're, that is actually a virtual background, uh, as I figured out. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing uh, very inspiring things uh, from Cologne. And I'm sure now we, I would like to ask all of you to switch on your video. All of you are interested to join the discussion and, uh, please either raise your hand, your physical hand or your virtual hand. I hope you all know how that works with reactions, uh, and the button downstairs. And the first question is coming from Mats from Stockholm. Yeah, sorry about not having a camera. I'm on a on a desktop computer. It doesn't have a camera, <laughs> so so apologies for that. Yeah, very interesting presentation. I think uh, from the beginning uh, and and uh, all about the German culture about being polite and and just turning on yellow markers and so on. And I like the ship idea, although I didn't understand where the ship really wound up in the end, but that may be, maybe that's a, another story. I think it's extremely important to look at teacher education because whatever we think of ourselves as professors and this and that at the university level, the greatest change is, is if we can have the teacher education modified. I work some a lot with Africa and the teacher education at the K-12 level is the most important one in my mind. So I really like your take on this. Um, but um, maybe, and this maybe is problematizing things a bit, um, and, and your video maybe uh, and, and enlightens this then. Uh, what about the, the uh, everyone in such videos and so are extrovert people uh, and but we also have introvert teachers that are thoughtful and but they don't like to show themselves off 
uh, and we don't want to leave them behind. They are like one third of the population, uh, something like that. So not every visionary people is extrovert and wants to be shown on YouTube or something like that. So, so but they are great design thinkers. We do a lot of courses in, uh, at openlabs.com and we, in, and we try to, to really cater for the introvert people and they thrive in our courses but they really do not thrive in society. Have you had any thoughts about the extrovert versus introvert dimension on, on, on all of this? That's my question. Yes, uh, thank you for that question, which is a very important one. Um, we actually have one of the um, most introvert um, leaders we have uh, who is um, actually diagnosed with Asperger um, syndrome and is um, actually a, a real introvert, is building a rocket to go to Mars and builds electric cars all around the place. I'm speaking from Elon Musk, who is <clears throat> sort of a model for me for people who wouldn't have a chance in a society who only honors the average. Um, I say exactly these kind of people um, should um, construct things, um, as Steve Jobs uh, um, used to say. You should produce things. You should generate things. That's where I usually really, really strong at. Um, so it's more about the team that uh, supports um, those kind of people. If imagine. You in your class, uh, you would have the future Elon Musk, which would be an introvert kid that would be thrown down the stairs by um, his um, other school kids in a normal school. And you can look this up in his biography. It happened. Um, so you need to um, develop a supportive um, surrounding for these people to thrive. Um, empathy is very important, respect uh, for the other, and everybody in the group should uh, try to figure out what are the, <clears throat> the best um, things in my part and how can I support them. That's a community effort. If you just aim for the highest grades, you will not reach this. Um, I'm referring for a concept that's called growth mindset, and the research has been done by Carol Beck. Growth mindset is the mind, mindset I can do a difference. And uh, the newest research from here, uh, it's uh, published in Nature, uh, showed that growth mindset cannot grow in, um, in a school that honors the average and go goes only for grades. Because um, a kid that has good ideas and is strong in math, strong in engineering, strong in whatever you want, uh, and it is not extrovert and it's not a, a team leader, will get suppressed because he's a competitor for you. So humans, uh, especially males, have a natural tendency to suppress competition. And that's a bad thing for these introvert um, students you were talking of. So you, uh, as research of Carol Jack shows, you have to shift the climate in the entire school to make these introvert uh, people thrive and uh, develop their kind of leadership. I hope that sort of answers uh, your questions, and I will be happy to provide you with the research literature about this. That, that, that was a really good answer, uh, provided that you actually do this. I don't think, I'm not sure that, that every teacher in education in the world does this, but you are actually looking at these problems and addressing them. If, if that's true, I'm impressed by you. <laughs> Thank you, but the credit goes to the school. It's actually the inclusive university school. So um, really that's what these impressive school do. And I'm honored uh, to be on board of this project. And I wouldn't be there if I hadn't learned design thinking because it happens to uh, that this school just figures that they need uh, this kind of competence there. So I'm on the board there. Yeah. Thank you, very interesting answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mats and also Andre, uh, great, uh, great information. Actually, I'm really interested also. And now we have Galina, Galina Emelina. Um, great to see you again after 
uh, a while I, we, we have met this year, even physically, I can't believe it, in Cologne, no, in Noise, actually at a workshop. Galina, Thank you, you are cooperating today. quite intensively with Andre. Yeah. Yes, I've actually started, I think, in 2018 or 19, where um, in, a, in a filming team, we produced a first series of design thinking introduction videos for the teaching. Um, for the te for the use of the teaching department of this uh, department of physics for Andre, and that was a big um, yeah big pleasure, and that's why then we also collaborated for the Teach to Startup project, and I was part of the ideation coaching team, and also we did a second pilot where we uh, tried to um, convey teaching methods in a more deep way. It's all, you can look it up all up on the website and so on. Um, and Andre can also say something about it. But now I have two um, questions. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for providing a bigger picture, Andre, for and a bigger um, framing and context for the, the, the different projects um, that I know already. My question right now, <clears throat> or my personal point of interest um, also in just working as a coach in design thinking is really sustainability innovation and planet-centered thinking, like shifting from user-centered to planet-centered thinking, and how can we bring that into schools um, with this design thinking, coaching, and arts background that I have. Um, specifically, um, if we talk about climate change, challenges and issues, which is, um, as we all agree, I guess, an international, a planetary challenge. Um, how is it possible, or what about the idea to make it possible for those kids that are being exposed to new methods to also maybe collaborate internationally? So how about maybe hooking these uh, kids in Cologne from this new school that is um, soon going to exist uh, here in Cologne, the Helios School? How about um, making a joint project with, for example, kids from India or kids from other cultures and countries and make the kids here realize that you know like they can exchange about hydroponics about how to maybe build out of recyclable um, materials how to build floating islands on which you can have maker spaces and floating classrooms and all of these things together so this is my first suggestion idea or question and the second one would be um Okay, so with design thinking, a new methodology comes with this idea, maybe um, international collaboration, school projects, new ideas for, for school and teaching come up. How is it possible to integrate that in a short term um, into the teaching plan? Because I know that Germany has very strict teaching plans, but our climate change issues are uh, maybe more important. So, and also even with Fridays for Future, how is it possible to, to bring this new empowerment that we bring to the kids through um, design thinking in school education. How is it possible to, to, to unite that with the existing kind of rigid structures of uh, the teaching plans in Germany or in Europe in general? Uh, a bunch of questions, uh, but uh, underlying, I see Galina that you have uh, discovered my secret plan. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Where I want to go with the school. Uh, now think about this. Um, diversity in classroom is always see as a burden. Oh no, I have got 80% migrants in my class. The teacher's groaning because he's used to work with those German kids from his background. Um, this school is completely different. Uh, it's not different uh, than um, all the schools in uh, Germany. But it's uh, conveniently located in Ehrenfeld, which is the most multi culti quarter um, of Cologne at all. So if you talk um, about connecting the school with the Indians or the Chinese or the Russians, that's not necessary. They are already there. If you go from this uh, white male university, um, uh, the, down the street to the um, classrooms of the university school. You open the classroom door to the entire world. Everybody is there. Now we have to teach the students to make a gain out of this, to see, to see this diversity as a chance to develop a global vision. Dad, they would say when they come back, if you don't know any Indian 
to solve your problems in India. No worries, Dad, I got you covered. I have my Indian friend in my classroom and he has perfect connections to whatever. That is a long distant plan. We need these global connections and um, that's one part of the secret plan to hope that I can uh, leverage the GDTA network for just this, um, seeing what beautiful global changing problems you uh, are fostering all across the globe. And coming back with the network of schools. Um, so we have the whole globe in our classrooms. Uh, that's a perfect model to develop solutions for this planet. If it works in a classroom in Cologne, it works everywhere. That's what I used to say. The only thing that's necessary is for climate change, for all these problems you've talked about, is a scientific background. And that's where the university really stands for. That's uh, that uh, concept of science, um, science teaching stands for that we want to bring into these classrooms. The community is there. The problem solving mindset is there. Design thinking is marvelous at doing this. And we just need to figure out how we can uh, integrate the science so that nobody asks, oh, why science? Because it's natural for them to look for a simulation for uh, uh, an Altai solution for technology or for physics to um, unearth the problems of this globe. Let me just use that opportunity uh, because uh, you're, you're addressing the international collaboration, cooperation with schools uh, regarding uh, design thinking activities. And uh, Andre, you were pointing on the GDTA as a network. That is a perfect opportunity uh, here, right here, um, to ask Nalin, our new member of the GDTA, uh, representing a school in India, a large uh, education institution, uh, which 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 have which is having students, but also kids in the in the school. So and it's in India, so you can immediately set up that cooperation here, right here. Nalin, you want to share some? Yeah, hi, hi, hi to everybody. Hi, <laughs> great to see you. Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, we, we have uh, from uh, primary school to a PhD, uh, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, today presentation uh, by uh, uh, by the talk, uh, speaker uh, was very very enlightening. Uh, our true appreciations to him. Uh, how he connected the fluid dynamics with uh, design thinking is is very very promising. And uh, going to uh, the talk which we are having uh, raised by uh, uh, Galina. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, we are open for all the uh, possible uh, association with India. Uh, and we are looking forward to connect, uh, having problems or uh, the projects which uh, international problems with our students or the problems in India, we can actually share it with uh, uh, GDTA to have a forum to uh, work on. Uh, we are open for that. And uh, mutual exchanges in terms of either school or the higher education, uh, we are certainly up for it. And uh, what SNS is currently doing in India, we have 10,000 students. Uh, what we are currently doing is like all the problems in nearby zones, we take it and give it to the students and ask them to practice it. And there is a larger uh, fraternity of teaching fraternity. We keep enlightening them on their design thinking practices. Of course, they go back to the older methods. We have to keep pulling them back to the design thinking method. So it is a larger process, probably after a half a decade or so, then it becomes a culture, part of the culture. So that, that is our, our present experience. And also we are open for any sort of association uh, totally. Very well, thank you. Uh, Nalina, I would really, from, from scratch, uh, want to connect with you. Uh, the school has a perfect um, um, hardware, so every uh, kid has uh, its own iPad. They're um, using Zoom, they're using the G Suite by, by Google, so it is so incredible easy to connect this school with any other place of the globe. And now imagine how the Indian kids in the classes would thrive if they are now the um, the link between uh, two societies. I could uh, not only act as a uh, translator, they could act as cultural translator and as facilitator of project as well. And that would show everybody how important diversity in classrooms is actually. 
uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, to be honest with me, uh, and also to myself with the, with the experience, uh, school kids are very easy uh, to get uh, adopting the design thinking culture. Yeah. And uh, the diversity, uh, they always look forward to it compared to higher education. So uh, um, I would say it is an easy uh, uh, dive in approach for particularly for the school kids. Yes, and if they see in their young years that diversity um, is a gift, uh, then they will uh, proceed with this all through their life. Uh, Absolutely. Because it's, yeah, that's, that's a big I, I totally agree. Uh, I've just sent a, a, a connect to a, a you in the LinkedIn, so hopefully we'll connect and then we'll work on it. Great, great, great. Looking forward. Cool. Thanks very much for immediately jumping on this, Nalin. Great. Pleasure, Gal pleasure. Galina, you, you're still you're raising your hand still? Ah, uh, Sorry, I, I forgot to unraise it. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. uh, but Galuka. still, I, I would be um, interested yeah. in the question how to combine this with a, a, a German existing um, teaching plan, which is usually more um, designed uh, concerned to the past as the future or um, like fast changes are usually not so easy to do. But I mean, yeah, we don't have to discuss this now. I, I think it's just a general question that I already asked myself when I was studying art education 10 years ago. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I have constant DHL today. I have to open the door, but uh, I hand over it to, <laughs> to Raluca. I'll be back. Okay. Perhaps short answer to this because we had this discussion, uh, Galina, we just had this uh, morning in the steering committee of the school. Um, should we draw the experimental clause so we could uh, really uh, unlock uh, this school from the German curriculum? There is a law in place uh, that the school could work as a lab and uh, teachers could do everything they want there. <laughs> and we said no, <laughs> because it's much more fun to get uh, into a standard school like this with standard laws, with the brightest people, uh, brightest teachers, curious kids, and figure out how you can really stretch the boundaries of the German curriculum to its fastest corners. And if we figure out how uh, we can mm -hmm. stretch and we can teach how to stretch boundaries to do our teacher ed yeah, students. Interesting. And that would think, make yeah. really change. <laughs> yeah, I think actually German schools to a certain extent, they have a lot of freedom, which I heard from, for example, from the um, ESBZ, the very famous uh, Evangelische Schule Berlin Zentrum. Yeah. yeah, we can exchange on that more in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, yes. But uh, extending boundaries is fun. <laughs> really. <laughs> if you say so. Like this creative constraints that you have in design thinking. <laughs> okay, I see Raluca. Raluca, hi. A bit, a bit. Um... Um, sorry, I don't know why I've been. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thank okay. you. Today I've been having some uh, uh, microphone problems. But thank you for the presentation. I remember how impressed I was by your presentation also when you joined the GDTA and uh, you talked about um, your work with teacher education. And we also have such a similar uh, department in the university in Sibiu, uh, where I also work part-time other than the D school. And uh, I wonder, if you also train uh, professors or you all only train students that want to become uh, professors? Well, <laughs> if you invite me, I would be happy to come over to your place and train your professors. <laughs> that's for a start, because that's uh, basically what we are doing. We are uh, trying to make our research um, in our local communities and schools, try to figure out what's possible. And by our academic networks, we try to translate our findings to other universities. And that would be, yes, uh, training other professors. Basically, yes. Um, uh, we are have uh, there's a growing department, so we are really expanding right now. Um, the learning is that it's really hard to retrain a professor that's already there. 
it's uh, much easier to acquire new professorships. We have uh, now uh, uh, a junior professorship for um, science education in the digital age. I'm really proud of that one because I really um, brought the university to the idea to have this professorship and he is starting in January. And with these new uh, people, we can, um, yes, we can train them on the job and we can really make changes. So that's the way it's done here. But uh, on the other hand, I would really happy to um, come to your place either virtually or personally and uh, share some findings because the real hard work is always to adapt this to local standards. It's easy to say at uh, some convention, oh, we did it that way, and then it's ex engage, explore, explain, la da la da la da. Uh, but uh, you really have to make it work in Cologne <laughs> in the, or in <laughs> wherever your place is. You know, because uh, um, I find it so interesting that uh, you have this department in in Romania, you have it in, I think, all universities. We have a teacher training department, but that only, but you don't use it to, to train teachers, already existing teachers, just to train people how to become teachers. And I find that so funny because, you know, you have this group of uh, this department with people that have so much knowledge and uh, you don't use it to improve only to train somehow and you mentioned this connection with design thinking i also see it how how well it um how helpful it is in teacher training and um you know this is actually my my research is about this why uh, high level professors that teach students to always ask why to always uh, learn uh, why they don't choose to learn themselves you know sometimes I mean they learn but only individually not not going to yeah. trainings or yeah. you know what I mean so yeah. this is that's tricky huh so uh, some answers to this if you got the time um, they are embedded in their own work in everyday uh, teaching business. So it's hard to get them out for a week to have a training. We learned this on the hard way. So what you can do is you can go to them and say, okay, um, provide me your students, your spaces, and we will show you how we can do it in the other way. That's what the basic use of the ship was, um, uh, a science lab where you can bring in your own class lay yourself back and see how um, students work with your kids because it's absolutely crucial to show the teachers that this stuff really works not only in theory um, another thing is if um, teachers have really demand uh, like for online teaching um, we provide a lot of digital media uh, matter of fact i have a youtube channel and with the um, uh, pandemic it, uh, we had thousand of views and we had in the comments there are a couple of students pupils asking questions that showed me that teachers were using my videos that were intended for teacher training in their own classes that's the second path so um, doing trade and teaching on the job second uh, um, providing digital media and um, Third path now in, in my uh, array, John Luke Ingelson is just below me high. <laughs> that's the proof of point. Uh, that's a professional training. So uh, John Luke uh, is undergoing his PhD studies um, at my um, department. So um, he's hopefully on the way to get a professor on its own. So that's uh, another way to um, have um, interested teachers embedded in the work of the department and research um, solutions that actually work. And they, um, Jean-Luc, you and uh, uh, the teachers like you are so important because uh, you are really necessary to get all these lofty ideas in the university and put it down to the ground before we uh, test everything at students. That's uh, for ethical reasons, a good, really, really good thing. And I'm happy that you are here. Okay. So, yeah. thank, thank you very much. We are now at the one hour. Uh, it's five o'clock here in Germany. And uh, that's usually the time where we switch off the video and uh, thank our speaker.
uh, and then if there is if Andre has some time uh, left over, we could do we could uh, still uh, stay in the chat here in the discussion. And but uh, let me first first of all thank thank you very much, Andre, for the great talk and also the great responses you're giving to the questions. Thank you very much, and uh, um, and also to your vice president. Uh, thanks. Uh, she had to leave a little bit earlier, um, but um, I'm uh, very happy that she was joining actually, and uh, that we have now a uh, very close connect to the school, uh, to the Cologne school. Um, and uh, yeah, say thanks uh, to her as, as well again. And uh, also thanks to Nalin that you may build a bridge immediately to India, I think that is uh, that is great <laughs> that we have that we can make use of the global network of the GDTA. That's what we like to see. Uh, thanks to Andre, and now the official part is over. I, uh, Steffi, we can announce something for the next year already, can't we? <clears throat> the next GDTA spotlight is planned for January the eighteenth. And we will have our GDTA members, the D school at the Universidad Mayor in Chile, Santiago de Chile, as a guest. And I'm looking forward to their presentation about how it's going on with design thinking in Chile. So thanks. Thanks for showing that slide here. And now we close officially the session with uh, a goodbye and a good. Christmas, have uh, celebrate, have nice holidays, and also a good step into the new year. <laughs>